the hallmark of mainstream sales training. And what they always tell us is really the goal of everything they do is to prep someone for the sale, whether it's overcoming objections, building rapport, any number of things. But it's with the mistaken assumption that, maybe even naive assumption, that these people are willing participants in the process. And they're kind of acting like people when we're in role playing. They'll just they'll throw you softball answers just because they don't want you to drill them hard when this when you switch seats. And one of the things that they tell us is that we need to qualify our prospects. But realistically, it might be the worst idea that you could ever come to, with. And Part of the reason is, you know, they'll tell us we need to know, we need to know if they have money or if they have a need or if the product's relevant. But in the end, if the person wants the product enough, the urgency and the money is going to appear. It's going to follow. We also need to understand that, look, everybody's defensive and they're not about to show you their cards. They're not about to give you all the leverage and negotiating room that they have. And when it comes to relevance, well, you're talking to them for a reason. But remember, your goal is not to get the sale. But there's a huge problem. And this is a problem that your trainers never told you about. And maybe they did that because they never even thought about it. Maybe they were just too scared to tell you. I mean, after all, if they told you what I'm about to tell you, it would sabotage everything that they could try to convince you to do. And look, you need to realize this. Your prospects are not there to help you. And they will not help you pretty much in any circumstance. In fact, they're going to generally oppose you every single chance they get. And there's a reason. They don't trust salespeople. So when you make yourself known as a salesperson and that you're really planning on making a sales pitch to them, it's going to turn them off and they're going to oppose you. But at the same time, they don't want to look bad or feel like an idiot. Sometimes you have to be the bad guy, but you have to do what's necessary. And these people do this every single time. So when people are doing this, when you're making a presentation and they're immediately opposing you, what do you do? How do you make sure that you're not wasting your time on people who don't need your product? I mean, in a sense, your salespeople did bring up a good point. Look, if you're talking to somebody that's totally irrelevant for your product, then, all right, fair enough. You probably don't want to spend time with them. But realistically, it's, it's an aberration as opposed to the rule. Look, this question itself comes from a scarcity mindset. People with scarcity, especially scarcity mindset, worry that if they don't maximize every single second with, quote, qualified prospects, unquote, they'll never hit their goal. And I got to tell you, this is ridiculously stressful. It drives people crazy and it absolutely sabotages their mindset. But when you put into practice what you're about to discover, you're going to naturally attract the best people out there. Not just clients, but with everybody in your life. It's like I told you, it didn't just impact my business. It impacted my personal life, my friends, athletics, relationships, everything. And the key is you do not qualify your prospects. In fact, you need to disqualify your prospects. Remember, people want to stereotype you as a low-value, parasite-like salesperson, but they're only going to do it if you act like one. Now, remember we talked about in the last module about the, but the fact that they stereotype you like that. They're doing it because there's some stimulus being given to them by us that makes us act a certain way. It's that Paul Venner in action again, right? Remember that Paul Venner is the enemy of the salesperson. But what would happen if nothing you did triggered that tripwire to stereotype you? Well, I'll tell you. Well, your prospects wouldn't have any clue on what to do. Remember, they're on autopilot. So when they get kicked off of autopilot and that Paul Venner gets disengaged, they have no clue. And they don't have any clue how to fly the plane, much less land the plane. So they're going to look for the first person that says they know how to fly a plane, and they're going to hand them the yoke. But the secret, again, is not to qualify your prospect. It's to actively disqualify your prospect. And we're going to overly demonst overtly demonstrate that we're not interested in the sale. Now think about that. All of your sales trainers are telling you that you need to be engaged and 
you know, be the apex of what a salesperson should be, the most knowledgeable person in the world. You're always reaching out to them, always trying to close any number of things. But we're going to actually overtly demonstrate that that's not our interest. Well, why do we do this? Well, it's because we need to turn off the PTSD that your prospects have inside of them. I mean, they have been abused over and over again and just taken to the cleaners by so many salespeople in the past that they absolutely will do anything to make sure that doesn't happen. And it really is PTSD. It's post-traumatic stress disorder. You could say post-traumatic salesperson disorder. But we need to make sure that we turn that off inside of them. And more than that, instead of just deprogramming them, we need to reprogram their existing pre-programming. And there are a few ways to go about this. And the ones that I love, I mean, these are really funny. So if you hear me smirk, just understand while they're really funny, they really work like crazy. And they're, they're total cheat codes and nobody does these, right? So number one, you make fun of salespeople. I mean, when was the last time that you were in a sales training class and your trainer told you to make fun of other salespeople? It just never happens. And yet, if you do that with your prospects, they're going to love it. They're going to eat it up. I mean, they're expecting you to be like everybody else. And yet, when you're not, their brain turns into a pretzel. They don't even know what to do. Now, some of the things that I do to kind of make fun of salespeople, you don't want to like point at them and mock them, but you do it a little bit more, indirect, more indirectly. You know, I'll ask people, like, how many times do these people call you? You know, with the inference of like, that's horrible. Whatever the answer is, it's something I would never do. Why is it that they always give you their business card? And you know everybody does that. And the inference is, well, I'm not going to give you my business card. Immediately, I'm going to be different. And, you know, they always seem to be like they're in a job interview. And, and nobody really likes to be with that. I mean, even people that are interviewing people for a job don't like it. Much less people that are in a little bit more of a natural state. Now, number two, you want to specialize. Now, this is one of my favorite cheat codes. And I'll give you an example of my friend Trevin. So, Trevin, if you're listening, you're welcome. <laughs> um, but I like to use you as an example because it really makes a difference. See, I have a friend, Tre Trevin, and he is a uh, personal financial planner or professional license. I don't know what the term is. but um, And so there's like 8 million people that do that, right? And yet, you know what Trevin does? Trevin specializes and only works with dentists. Now, before we go any further, just understand, Trevin's not a dentist. I don't think he's ever gone to dental school. Maybe he's, I don't even know, he's gone to a dental appointment. No, he probably has. He has good teeth. And yet, when he goes into a room and tells them that he is a certified financial planner, that's the title, um, they're probably ready to roll their eyes. But he finishes the sentence that says, for dentists. And if you're not a dentist, then you know a sales pisser isn't coming. But if you are a dentist, then you know this guy just called his shot. And you know that whatever he, you know, whatever he does, he knows everything about your business, all the unique needs and specialties and problems and opportunities that you have. And so this guy becomes very much in demand. And what, just like my friend Trevin, when you do this, what it communicates is you are the expert. There's nobody, there's no other competition. Uh, it means you have a ton of clients. You're not going to try to sell them if they don't fit into what you do. And honestly, it'll be the best decision they make if they end up do fitting. And really for you, it'll be the best decision ever because you have a pre-qualified client. 